Welcome back to Watch Party Recaps. Today we have a 2017 sci-fi anime called Blame. Warning, spoilers ahead, get ready and enjoy. In the distant technological future, civilization has reached its ultimate net-based form. An infection in the past caused the automated systems to spiral out of control, resulting in a multi-leveled city structure that replicates itself infinitely in all directions. Now humanity has lost access to the city's controls and is hunted down to be purged by the defense system known as the Safeguard. Several young members from a village called Electrofishers are running through the endless city, desperately looking for food to bring back to their village. Zuru, along with her close friend Tay and other Electrofishers, are on their way to an old hunting ground that some older Electrofishers have visited before. While wearing suits called Hellmetals, that boost their speed and contain advanced computers inside the helmet, while also believing that it keeps them from being spotted by the observation towers, that are capable of summoning safeguard exterminators. On the way there, they run into one of the builders, huge autonomous machines whose sole function is to build new structures and improve existing ones throughout the city. As such, they are responsible for its constant and chaotic expansion. As the group gets closer to the hunting grounds, Tay apologizes to Zuru for coming out here and believes she is only doing it to help her sister. Zuru explains that the whole village is in need of food, not just her sister and tells her that she doesn't have to apologize. Once the group arrives, it is shown that the hunting grounds is actually an old bug-infested pipe that supplies them with sludge that they eat. One of the members named Yai Chi is excited and rushes up to the pipes, only to find out that it is empty and has been dried up for quite some time. Yai Chi drops to the ground in disappointment, then suddenly one of the observation towers spots them and starts summoning exterminators. The group holds their ground, till an exterminator comes from above and immediately kills Yai Chi. The group then decides to retreat and, in the panic, they all get separated. The exterminators are killing them one by one, till Zuru spots Tay that has gotten her foot stuck between some pipes and is getting charged at by one of the exterminators. Zuru jumps high into the air and with a precision shot, shoots it in the head saving Tay, but for jumping so high, she ends up falling down to another level, where the remaining summon exterminators start chasing her. She keeps running, till suddenly she sees a human-like stranger pointing a weapon in her direction. She jumps out of the way, right before he fires and ends up destroying the exterminators that was chasing her and part of the level they are on. Tay and another surviving member of the group named Fusada, sees Zuru and comes down to help her. The stranger then asks them to take off their helmet. Hesitant at first, she notices that the observation tower isn't going off that's right over them, then decides to remove her helmet and the others follow suit. This is where it's shown that the stranger is actually a cyborg that starts scanning the trio with his eyes. He then asks them if there's any humans here with the net terminal gene. Zuru replies that since he saved her, she is willing to help, but she doesn't know what he is talking about. The stranger then turns around and starts walking away, till Zuru explains that maybe one of the elders in her village might know, but she wants to know what he is first. This is where it's revealed that the stranger's name is Killy and he tells her that he is human. Sometime later, they reach the village of the Electrofishers, where they are greeted at the front gate by the leader of the village named Pops and the village idiot named Sutizo. Ready with their weapons drawn and pointed at Killy, Pops yells at Zuru and the other two, for showing their faces, which he's worried that it could set off the observation towers. Then Fusada explains that it won't as long as they're with Killy. Zuru then explains how Killy rescued them and that he is a human. Skeptical, Pops and Sutizo drop down from the gate and approach Killy. Worried that he might be a safeguard in disguise, Pops lets Killy pass through the perimeter that could destroy any safeguard. Seeing that Killy passed through without any issues, Pops welcomes him to the village. Worried sick, the villagers scold the surviving three for going off without permission and losing three comrades, also for not retrieving the Hellmetals that they were wearing because they don't have the materials to create them anymore. Curious, the villagers look at Killy and ask who he is, because it's their first time seeing an outsider for their generation. Pops tells them that he is a traveler from the outside, like no shit. They immediately grow cautious of him and start accusing him of being a safeguard. 
Then suddenly, one of the village children run up to Killy to get a better look. Killy then hands her a yellow food ration bar, where her brother snatches it away from her and notices that it has instructions on how to use it by placing it in some water. He throws it into the town well, where it suddenly expands and knocks them over. Noticing its food, the villagers start stuffing their faces, not even giving any acknowledgement to the person who saved them from starvation. Pops then escorts Killy up to his private quarters to have a conversation about the net terminal gene and recalls hearing about it from the rotting shrine, that's right below the village. Abruptly, he stands up and starts leaving for the shrine, and followed by Zuru, Sutizo, and Pops. At the shrine, he finds the spoiled machine corpse of Sibo, a former scientist from before the disaster. Sibo states that she has been waiting for 17,526,000 hours for somebody to come help her. Impressed by Killy's weapon, Sibo calls it a gravitational beam emitter, a weapon that could be shot at the expense of the user's life force. Sibo then reveals that it is her that built a shield generator that protects the village from the safeguard and then asks Killy to bring her to the automated factory, where they could produce anything like a synthetic terminal that has the same effect as the net terminal gene and more food rations for the villagers. Heeding her words, a group of villagers including Tay and Zuru travel to the automated factory in search of more rations and the synthetic terminal. Arriving there, Sibo assists in logging into the system and produces a large number of rations, much to the delight of the villagers. However, right after she produces a synthetic terminal for Killy, the system rejects her login and builds multiple exterminators to eliminate the villagers. Pops notices this and tells everyone to retreat and in the panic, Tay gets separated from the group, but Zuru eventually finds her alone next to a destroyed exterminator. Sibo, who remakes herself using the system in a cyborg form, leads the villagers to a railway car and escapes back to the village. During the ride, Killy is knocked unconscious trying to save the villagers. Arriving at the village, the villagers celebrate at the sudden amount of food. While holding the celebration, Sibo secretly wakes Killy up with only Zuru as a witness and leads him down towards the shield generator with the machine. While heading down, Tay takes her gun to the observatory platform and shoots the shield generator, whereupon it is revealed that the real Tay was killed and replaced by a cyborg representative for the safeguard back at the factory. Sanakian, as she now calls herself, proceeds to kill multiple villagers, deeming them illegal residents. In the middle of the chaos, she also summons a legion of exterminators that start pouring into the village. Killy, realizing what has occurred, runs back up to the village on his own. Sibo travels further down at a faster pace, where she sets the synthetic terminal right next to the destroyed shield generator and connects herself to it. Back at the top, Sanakin is killing residents, but the village elders frantically lead the rest of the villagers to the top of the village where they resist her using their remaining weapons. While Sanakin is in the process of trying to kill Sutizo, Killy suddenly appears out of the smoke and punches Sanakin down, where he stomps her with such immense force that the entire floor crumbles, causing them to fall to another level. Hand-to-hand -hand combat starts and, in the struggle, Killy gets hit by a laser shot from Sanakian that results in him losing his arm and the gravitational beam emitter. Killy is then pinned down and is about to be killed by Sanakian until Zuru throws him his gravitational beam emitter, which he shoots and destroys Sanakian, but not before Sanakian destroys Sibo along with the synthetic terminal. Sibo, in an alternate dimension, pleads with the authority, which controls the safeguard, to let the villagers go. Unable to do so, since the synthetic terminal she was using is now destroyed, they allow her to edit their base of levels of the city, which disconnects the level below the village from safeguard control. Sibo, now functioning through her only remaining arm, leads the remaining villagers to a trans-level railway car, but right after the villagers get in, an observatory tower spots them. Killy throws the device which has been keeping him safe from the safeguard to Zuru, upon which he says that he still wants to find the net terminal gene, which enables human control of the safeguard. He then stays behind so the villagers are able to escape. The movie ends, when Zuru's granddaughter narrates that the village still lives in the level below to this day, still waiting for Killy to find the net terminal. She then says that Zuru still talks about Killy, to the point that he sounds like the last hope for humanity.